So again, welcome to Get Social on Social Media with me, Jonathan Lickstein. Um, there is a message in the chat box. If you have a question, please click raise hand on the participants tab and we'll be happy to answer that question and address you at that time. You should all be able to share, see, see my screen. It's in a beautiful pink color. If you cannot see your, my screen for any reason, please let me know and I will continue on. So there is a very good quote that I like to follow. If anyone listens to podcasts, uh, Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk does a great podcast on marketing. And something he says, I believe is very, very relative to social media. Saying hello doesn't have an ROI. It's about building relationships. What that means is every single post and every single conversation you have on a social media outlet, out, outlet will not necessarily return a dollar for dollar return on your investment. You can't necessarily assimilate a transaction from a specific post that you did. It's about starting a conversation and using that conversation to build a relationship. Transactions come from relationships. Referrals come from relationships. So the idea is saying hello, starting a conversation and being able to build a relationship from that. So don't look at a dollars and cents. It takes me X amount of time to post. I get X amount of dollars back. This is a long-term proposition. This is something of a pipeline, a pathway in which you are looking to start a conversation, build a relationship, and then capitalize on that relationship. So let's talk about this. Whenever you're hitting social media or you're coming at it and you want to get into it, you need to be calculated in your approach. If you just go out of your pocket and start posting things, there is no way for you to judge or see the success or failure of your plan and what you're doing. It's taking the shotgun approach, which is not a very conducive approach to success. So the idea is you come in with a plan, a goal of what you're looking to accomplish and then how you're going to get there. So in your plan, number one, be very realistic on your goals. Don't come in and think, I'm gonna start social media marketing and I'm gonna close 50 transactions this year from social media alone. Be realistic, find short attainable goals that you can reach past that goal and set a new one. If your goal is I wanna close a transaction from a lead from social media specifically, that's a fantastic goal. Start there and then you can diversify, double down and bring in more business from there. Number two, choose your platforms. Don't simply sign up everywhere. I'm gonna create a Twitter, a Pinterest, a YouTube, a Facebook, an Instagram, a LinkedIn, um, a TikTok, a Snapchat, and I'm going to be active on all of them because I'm gonna get a lead if it's there. Not a good way to go. There is no way for you to be consistent on eight different platforms that I just mentioned. It is impossible. So choose your, your platforms carefully figure out where your target market is and that's where you want to put your effort into. Focus on your consistency. What I mean by that is your consistency in posting and being active. Just posting and walking away is not sufficient. The whole point of posting is to generate a conversation. If you simply post and ignore, you can't engage with the consumers or your following that is, that is seeing your post. If you get a comment, you need to respond back and engage that consumer. Start a conversation with them. Change that and go from posting and commenting to a conversation and cultivating a relationship. Number four, plan ahead. Think about where you want to go. Not necessarily just the short-term goal, but the long-term goal. If your goal is to be able to have success in doing Facebook ads and Instagram ads, there are steps along the way that you really need to set up as a base for that to be successful for you. What I mean by that, I'll jump into more details. If you simply create a Facebook business page from day one and start to pay for advertising, there is something called a quality or relativity score. This works very similarly on Facebook as it does to Google. Google and Facebook love to fight with each other. Facebook stole Google's girlfriend in high school, so they fight back and forth consistently. Anyhow, when you create your business page, you're given a zero out of 10 quality score because you have no content, you have no followers, you have no complete profile. As you complete things and post information with different keywords, you have an additional amount of followers, of page viewers, then your quality score starts to creep up. Why that's important to you is the higher the quality score, the lower your cost per click on advertising is. 
Facebook wants to show its users content that they believe that the users want to see. So the higher your quality score, the more often you'll appear and the less it will cost you to get those actual clicks. If you start from day one, you'll appear about approximately half as much and pay twice the cost per click. So there is a lot of framework that you wanna set up along the way to make sure that you're being as efficient as humanly possible with your advertising dollars. Instagram works somewhat along the same lines. Instagram does a lot of advertising based on the followers that you already have. So no, don't go to an online service that buys you followers. That will not help you. You need organic, real people. And we'll talk about how to build that organic following as we get further in here. But the quality of the followers is pretty important. The dollar for dollar spend that you have on Instagram, the dollar for dollar spend that you have on Instagram um, will be based on the followers that you have. So if you're a realtor and you want to find consumers, having other realtors follow you is not a very conducive way to market because you will be hitting other realtors with your paid advertising. You need legitimate consumers. I got a chat here that the sound has a lot of echo. Is that the same for everyone? If you're having the same issue, please let me know. Luis does not. No. Nope. Okay. I'm going to continue. Um, that was from Natalie, I believe. Uh, Natalia, if you would like to connect your audio by phone instead of by internet, that helps a lot of times with the audio quality. Uh, Luis, you asked about Yelp as being a platform. We'll go into the different reviews of, uh, of traffic. We'll go into the different uh, statistics I'm going to share with you on where consumers really are. And I'm sure a lot of you will echo the same thing. Paid Yelp ads, <laughs> terrible, don't waste your money. Um, as far as organic stuff, yes, it's nice to be consistent across separate outlets as Yelp does index pretty well with the search engines. But as far as paid advertising, definitely do not do Yelp. Okay. Uh, moving on, planning ahead, we just talked about that. Trying to get your quality score up and get some organic quality followers. Uh, the last one is leveraging automation. Every real estate coach that you ever speak with will talk to you about organizing yourself, getting you into a CRM and staying organized. That is the way to go. You have to have a path. If you're doing lead generation through social media, it has to go somewhere. The average incubation time for a lead from social media is 12 to 18 months. That tells you right there, it is not an overnight success. It is a pipeline. You're putting people in longer down the road than what you're doing from a realtor.com or a Zillow, for example. If you take a realtor.com or a Zillow lead, the average time is three to five months. So this is five times longer than that, a little less than five times. Anyhow, so you need to have a follow-up process in place. The idea is the advertisements and the leads that come in from your social media generation go into a CRM and you have a campaign that follows up with them or tells you to follow up with them. You cannot just expect a one call build a relationship. You have to keep hitting them with valuable content. We're gonna dive more into these details. I'm trying to give you a general overview first. Okay, now where's your target market? Where are the people? You wanna spend your time more on the values and the portals where you're going to reach the greater majority of individuals. As you can see from this, uh, from this graph in front of you, these are 2020 statistics. Uh, Facebook has 2.6 billion users. That's 2,603 million. 2.6 billion users. YouTube, 2 billion. WhatsApp, 2 billion, also owned by Facebook. Facebook Messenger, 1.3 billion, also owned by Facebook. Going down to more, Instagram, 1.08 billion, also owned by Facebook. Okay, everything that is over 1 billion users is owned and operated by Facebook other than YouTube which is owned by the monster. We all know who owns YouTube, that's Google. We'll talk about YouTube a little bit more. But you can see where the majority of people are. Twitter, you can see all the way at the bottom. I would much rather spend my time on Facebook hitting 2.6 billion people that I can filter down instead of 326 million. It is a big, big difference on impact and who you can reach. 
but we'll dive more into all of those. I don't believe personally that Twitter, Reddit, Pinterest, Snapchat um, have been effective whatsoever in lead generation on the masses. Yes, you may get one, you may get two, but for the one and two, the effort that you put in on those portals, you'd probably be in the 10 to 15 on the others. So where is your time really worth it? In my opinion, there's really three big ones to spend your time on. And if you're only gonna do a few, these are the three that play really well with each other. So it's a great time to spend, a great place to spend your time and maximize your time. The three main platforms that I would talk about are Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube is absolutely one of my favorites and we'll dive more into that, but there's so much more that you can do with YouTube, especially since Google is playing so nicely with the YouTube videos and really promoting those at the top. But Facebook, on Facebook, you can engage with targeted users, present your brand, products, and services. The, the mistake that many realtors make is trying to sell through Facebook. That is not a successful way to operate. Success on Facebook is not by pushing products. It's by developing a, a relationship and selling a lifestyle. Instagram. Instagram is all about creating interesting and engaging content. It's definitely the main recipe for success. Posting minimum one time per day on Instagram, most often more than that, but one is definitely a baseline. Photos, images, and short 15 second videos that are engaging. No matter what platform you're on, if your message is not engaging, if it's salesy or boring, you will fail, no matter what platform you are on. Uh, Instagram is also the home of the hashtag, which we'll, tie, we'll talk about a little bit more on how to leverage those. Uh, YouTube, on YouTube, videos are meant to be short. Don't think because you have the ability to upload a four hour video that you should upload a four hour video. The average consumer disconnects from a video after one and a half to three minutes. They will judge you from that first bit. And if it's boring, they'll click through, jumping ahead, and they will end up leaving and dropping off of your video. That's a fail. Videos that drag on too long don't work. Keep the message concise and informational. You need to be engaging. You need to have fun with it. What I mean by that is if you're standing in front of a house talking about a new listing you have, if you simply stand there and say, welcome to my listing, 123 Main Street, it's a three bedroom, um, it has a nice bathroom, it's renovated with a pool and a fenced in yard. Boring, nobody cares. They can find that information online, okay? Engage them, be fun. There is a broker in the panhandle of Florida that dresses up as Willy Wonka for every video he does. And that's kind of his branding. He goes to the property dressed full costume and treats it like he's touring the chocolate factory when he's touring the house. Engaging, engaging, engaging. His videos not only get a really high value as far as how long they watch them, but the share and the reach that he gets with those videos on other social media outlets is absolutely tremendous. And you know what he spends on those? Nothing. That's the idea engage and find people to follow you because they're engaged and entertained by what you do. Moving on. There are two ways to hit social media as a general idea. You can either grow organically and spend more time rather than money, or you can grow through an ad spend and financially back your growth. Two different ways to go about that. So remember I said, think ahead and plan ahead, this is what I'm talking about. Are you going to grow organically or are you going to grow through ad spend? That is something that you want to define. If you're growing organically, your focuses will be on creating the content, how to publish the content, interacting and bringing in groups and users into your page, engaging with the followers of your page, and your ultimate goal is starting conversations. Conversations, again, lead to relationships. Relationships lead to transactions. Transactions lead to more transactions and referrals. The idea is creating a larger base of individuals that you can work with in your business. If you're going to grow through ad spend, your focus is on creating content again, making your postings as efficient as possible because you don't wanna spend the time, you'd rather back it financially. You want to engage with other businesses that will share your information. You want to engage with consumers that follow you and your ultimate goal is getting the quality score of your business page as high as humanly possible 
so that your dollar for dollar spend on ads is as low as humanly possible. I think you kind of catch what I'm putting at. You're picking up what I'm putting down here. Okay. Moving through hashtags. Let's talk about hashtags. What is a hashtag? Very simply put, it is a pound sign or a hashtag commonly found on your phone, followed by a word or phrase with no spaces. Exactly what it says on your screen here. But what does it really mean? What does a hashtag really do? And that has changed a lot over the last 12 months. So think of hashtags as like chapters in a book or indexes at the back of the book. You want to find everything that there was about the as is contract. We'll talk about real estate related things. So you go to the end of the book, you look through the index for as is contract, and it tells you what pages the as is contract is spoken about. That's an idea of a hashtag. If you go to a specific hashtag, you click on it, it will show you everything that is related to that hashtag. Every time that hashtag has been used. Why this is important? No. Consumers are not going on Instagram, searching hashtag for sale and saying, what's for sale in the market? That's where I'm gonna look for a house to buy. No, they're not. But if a consumer is on real estate related websites, they're following, they're being followed by cookies, trailing them. Re, uh, remarketing advertisements are coming up now in their feed and they're engaging and interacting with things that have hashtag for sale. Hashtag house, hashtag open house, hashtag listing, hashtag real estate, hashtag moving, all of these, right? They're different topics and keywords that can be used in other postings that they engage with. The more they engage with those hashtags and then you utilize them, you now, your post now has a chance to show up on the feed of someone else who's not connected with you. This is about expanding your reach and finding new people. So let's say, for example, if someone is not necessarily looking for a realtor or to sell their house, someone who lives in Boca Raton, what are they likely to engage with? Other postings that use hashtag Boca Raton. So if you're doing something in Boca Raton, you would want to use hashtag Boca Raton on your postings. Makes sense. This is very much why all the more modern weddings have hashtag she got Smith or hashtag Mr. and Mrs. Smith, for example. If there's a Smith on here, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. Uh, anyhow, it is a grouping of content, pictures, videos, and everything. So after the wedding, not only do the bride and groom have the wedding photography from the photographer, but they can also go on to social media, to Instagram, and see every picture and every video that the attendees of their wedding posted. It's a collection of concepts and ideas. This is the same kind of concept that is utilized at sporting events. Well, pre-COVID sporting events. Any Miami Dolphins game that you would go to, for example, number one, you're a glutton for punishment by going to a Dolphins game, but um, I go as well. But the idea is every game has hashtag Miami versus whoever they're playing. And anyone that posts inside the arena or anywhere for that matter with that hashtag actually comes up on the Jumbotron because they're using the grouping of hashtags to populate the images and videos that go onto the Jumbotron. They've gotten rid of the big guys with the big cameras and they utilize hashtag organization to be able to populate that. So you definitely need to be utilizing hashtags both on Instagram and Facebook because Facebook now indexes them, which allows you to reach more people. We're going to talk about some popular hashtags and how to utilize them. So, on Facebook, we're talking Facebook specifically. You can use many, many, many different hashtags. I believe the limit is 30 on Facebook, now matching what Instagram does. However, research shows that when you use over 10 hashtags in a post, there is a decreased number of engagement from a consumer on average. There are exceptions, of course. But on average, using over 10 hashtags is viewed as confusing the consumer on the other side. Now, I will relate that very much to the average age bracket on Facebook is a much older age bracket than on Instagram, where it's a completely different story. The optimal number to use, recommended number, is one or two hashtags. 
the number of engagement spikes at two hashtags and drops significantly at three and therefore going forth onwards. So one to two hashtags. Now, how to use hashtags in your postings? They are used in the actual caption when you are posting your image or video or article. There are three different ways for you to utilize them. And I have them at the bottom of the page here, which we'll talk about right now. The first option is called inline, meaning it becomes part of your text. This would be a post about a brand new listing in Boca Raton that we want people to go see. New hashtag listing in Boca Raton. This one is an absolute must see hashtag happy seller. Now, if you're like me, that's a little bit confusing to read because it is broken up by the hashtags in the middle. The second way is a much cleaner way for me to read that. New listing in Boca Raton. This one is an absolute must see. Then I have my hashtags. I use three on here for an example. But the fourth, the third way, which is my favorite personally, is the hidden method, meaning the consumer doesn't see it, but I still get the effect of the reach and I still get the effect of the index of the hashtags to be able to reach additional people. So the bottom one would be my excerpt, my caption that I'm looking for, new listing in Boca Raton, comma, this one is an absolute must see. Super easy to read, very straight to the point. Now, how you hide that is by going down three lines. But Jonathan, I can't just space down three lines. You're right. You need to go enter to a new line, period. Enter to a new line, period, three times, and then insert your hashtags. I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. For example, new listing, down, period, down, period, down, period. Then you will include your hashtags here, okay? That is the third way and hidden method on Facebook. There are different ways to do this on Instagram, but for Facebook, this, these are the three ways. It's all personal preference. The implications or the impact of the hashtags do not change no matter which one of these methods you use. It's about readership on the consumer side. So I don't recommend the top one. I don't recommend the, uh, the inline. I do recommend after or hidden. Okay, any questions about hashtags on Facebook while I'm on here? Seeing none, we're moving on. Let's talk about hashtags on Instagram. So Instagram allows you a maximum of 30 hashtags per posting. 18 is historically the ideal number. Beyond that, the efficacy of additional hashtags is very, very minimal. So if you have a tough time coming up with keywords or hashtags, once you hit 18, don't stress about it. Publish with the 18 you have. Try and use 11 at the minimum because the graph kind of goes like this. You know, you're here, 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 you're here, and then you hit 11, it spikes, and then 18, it spikes again, and then it kind of stays plateaued going there forward. So 30 is the max, but 11 to 18 is good. 18 is ideal, uh, 18 different hashtags. And I'm gonna give you loads of different hashtags to utilize and some ideas on food for thought. So I'm not just leaving you hanging here. Now, how to use hashtags on Instagram. We do have similar methods, just like we had on Facebook, however, inline and after. However, Instagram has an additional way to do hidden ones. Instead of having to do the three lines down with periods on each line, you can actually post the caption and image with just the one liner or just the caption you'd like to use, and then comment on your own posting with all of your hashtags. It has the same exact effect. It does not reduce the efficacy whatsoever. So that is a nice clean way to do it sometimes. So the consumer is not confused at all. They're not seeing any hashtags. It's a very clean posting, but you still get the effect of hashtags. Um, I know that's a little bit confusing, but if you have a question, please stop me. If not, I'm going to continue on. If you'd like, I'm gonna type that in here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Caption would go here. So this is one option with the three lines and then hashtags again, just like we did on, uh, just like we did on Facebook. That's one option. But the other option would be 
not to do any other than your original caption, publish your post, and then add a comment with your hashtags included. Okay, pretty straightforward on that one. Clearing this, there we go, we'll move on. Thanks. Okay, going forward. Oop. Sorry guys, jumping around here. Okay, so top real estate hashtags. Through the end of June 2020, July's haven't come out yet with any updates. Here are the top hashtags pertaining to real estate that are interacted with on Instagram. The left column exactly as they are. Hashtag homes, hashtag home, hashtag for sale, hashtag realty, hashtag brokerage, hashtag real estate, hashtag listing, hashtag great value. This could become like a little bit of a contest reading all of these hashtags as fast as you possibly can. But the only ones that I really wanna point out on here, other than the obvious, are in the top right corner. In the top right corner, these and this. We're gonna talk about that right now. Property location, community name, company name, and your brand. Property location is probably the number one most important in my eyes for hashtags because consumers who live in that area are more likely to interact with postings about their home area. I'll go back to that Boca Raton reference, not because I live in Boca Raton, love Boca Raton, and think everybody should live in Boca Raton, hint, hint, just kidding. Um, Samantha, I'll get to your question in one second, but consumers who live in that city are interacting with posts every single day from their community. So for example, I follow city of Boca Raton. Every single posting from the city of Boca Raton includes hashtag Boca Raton and other cities do the exact same thing. In fact, most cities in South Florida have their own marketing and social media department to do just this and create engagement with their residents as an easy way to hit their residents. So you can now leverage that by using the hashtag that they would include and that they would interact with and engage with from their city announcements, from their city updates, especially with COVID going on, everyone's following news outlets, everyone's following city and municipal governments to find out what's going on in their city and their county. So the property location is tremendously impactful using the city. Now, if you live in Fort Lauderdale, for example, you'll have to use multiples. Hashtag FT Lauderdale, hashtag, hashtag FORT Lauderdale, because one will not conflict with the other. You need to do both. And that's why homes and home are on there. Um, Samantha had a question, are hashtags still effective if they look like this, meaning capitalization in the middle? Yes, it does not affect the efficiency of that hashtag whatsoever. So that is perfectly fine. Um, in fact, if you're using them either in line or at the end of your caption, they're more readable with the way that you type them with capitalization. In fact, that is the recommended use case. But if you're trying to hide them in the bottom of your caption, or if you're in the comments and adding them, it makes no difference one way or the other. You're just spending more time capitalizing letters. Uh, Lily had a question where some of the big ones, million plus followers might get lost versus also including more specific hashtags, smaller follower accounts to get those followers too. I would do both across both spectrums. I'm not going to, for example, million dollar listing is a really big one, but that's more towards agents than it is towards consumers. So for me, I use million dollar listing in every post that I do about agents because it gains a larger variety, a larger spread and for agents that find me from there or click on million dollar listing, I have a chance to appear, but there's that many more eyes on that hashtag. So the net you're casting is much larger. You know, putting a, a million plus follower hashtag versus a 150 user hashtag, they don't conflict with each other. So you do get the best of both worlds, but what you're doing is trying to get engagement from those hashtags so you can leverage those followers and find other people like them. That's the whole point of building organic following on Instagram. Yes, you can hit them with your organic postings, but you can leverage the followers that you have to find other people like them. And that is why I want to use those that widespread of hashtags like hashtag homes. 
That is a massive, massive, massive hashtag. Hashtag realtors, again, another massive one. But if you combine hashtag realtors, hashtag Boca Raton, hashtag Boca Isles, hashtag Remax or Cobalt Banker or KW or EXP, whatever it is, you're casting nets in different directions to try and pull them back to you. And when they come back to you, their other interactions double down for you where you can leverage that to be someone else that looks like them. So there's no negative in using larger or smaller hashtags. Realistically speaking, a consumer is not going into the search field on Instagram and searching for sale. They're just not. They're not going to go on there and, and go and, uh, excuse me, they're not going to go on there and look for someone to work with from Instagram that posted something for sale on there. It's just not happening. Um, someone who goes to browse on Instagram, for example, will work with someone based on image and presentation. So engaging and quality content is the name of the game on there. Another question. Um, if there's a post from yesterday and you go back and add more hashtags, will it still gain traction? Absolutely. Go back, go to the comments section or go to the edit section and insert your hashtags there. Uh, it does not lose efficacy whatsoever. If you change it today from here forward, it's now been tagged onto that image. So if you have a consumer, for example, who engages with your post and hash says hashtag dream home, for example, if it's, a, if it's a listing that you posted, dream home is now attached to all of the hashtags that you placed on there. So it does have the same efficacy. Um, go back and you can go through those and add additional hashtags. Um, going down your brand. This is a big one that we'll talk about a little bit more, but you have to have your own brand. Your brand is not the name of the company you work with, unless you're the broker. Your brand is who you are. You are your own brand. So how you put yourself across on social media is a direct reflection of you. And we'll talk more in details about that, but I'm going to get you out of the box and out of your comfort zone when we talk about that. So get ready to be uncomfortable. Uh, moving forward here. All right. Building a quality score and building a following is very, very directly correlated to what you put out there and how you present yourself on social media. I mean, marketing at any point is all about what you put out there and the image that you present. Social media is just a glaring, obvious example of that. I'm wondering if anybody catches that I have a post on the left side when I'm talking about posting. Um, anyhow, so let's talk about what you can post and what you should not post. And then we're gonna jump into details about each individual one. So things you should post. Obviously, we're in real estate. We wanna post real estate related items. Properties, listings that you have, open houses. We'll dive into more details in a second. Post about your successes, your closings. Now, closings is commonly perceived and thought of as sale closings. Don't put your renters down. Rental sales, rental closings and sale closings can still be perceived the same way to the public. A buyer getting a key and a tenant getting a key is still a happy customer moving in. You do not need to differentiate that. You do need to be clear that you are helping these consumers close or consumers got keys. The Smiths got their keys today and having fun with that. But we'll talk more about it. Uh, can I show us how do hashtag will look on Instagram for hidden? Um, sure, I can go back into that, uh, Katrina. I did give a few examples going back on doing the three lines down or adding by comments, uh, but I'm happy to do it one more time here. We'll do it one more time real quick. And I'm just gonna do it on this page for uh, ease of use. So your caption would be on the first line here. And then to option one for hiding is going down with three periods, just like that. You're going down three lines. Now, the reason to do it three times is Instagram only pulls the first three lines of your caption. So automatically right here, even with six words in my initial caption, I'm going to be hidden, meaning they would have to click read more in order to see everything below that. So at this point, I would be putting my hashtags. Okay, like that. So anything below this point right here would be completely hidden from the consumer and they wouldn't see it unless it says read more. But if you're on Instagram, for example, you don't have to do that at all. 
you can publish your posting with just the caption. And once you've posted it, add a comment to your own post with all of the hashtags included in there. So I hope that's, that's clear for everybody and I can uh, continue on. So going on with more postings, no problem, Katrina. So going on with more postings, uh, other things to post, testimonials and reviews. We work hard with every single customer to make it a quality experience. And we shoot ourselves in the foot by not asking for the review, by not asking for the testimonial. And I'm gonna give you a few creative ways to talk about that and where to really leverage those testimonials when we get to that slide. Uh, real estate related news and community news. As realtors, we farm a specific area, ideally. And when we farm an area, we are supposed to be the local experts about anything and everything about that community. I'm not talking about the gossip down the street, but businesses opening, construction that's coming, construction that's upcoming or already ongoing. Um, local government, clubs, happenings, all of that. Here's a big one. I put it in capital letters for a reason. Post about you. People want to get to know you. The more they get to see you and know you, the more likely they are to feel comfortable picking up the phone and getting on the other side to be able to meet you and build a relationship. You have to be a little bit about yourself on social media. But again, we're going to dive into that more when I get to the details page. And last, infographics. Infographics are fun and they can be conversation starters, but we're going to dive into that again. This is the general summary and we're going to dive into more details on every single one of these. Do not post personal information. Everyone has that friend on Facebook who tells you what they ate today, when they went to the restroom, somebody they're not happy with, or some other type of personal information. I am very sad to admit that a friend I went to high school with posted his email address and password on his page. Probably a mistake, but don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Don't post your personal information. Second, never, ever, never, ever, never post anything related with your name or your business about religion, politics, or any other controversial topics that will rub someone the wrong way. If you are a very strong political voice and you like to voice your opinion, create a separate account with a different name. Do not do it under your real estate name. Your broker will thank you because they get reached out to by consumers who don't agree with your views. Or it will come back and directly affect you. There will be reviews left on your pages that you don't want there and it will impact your business dollar for dollar. So avoid religion, politics, or anything other controversial at all costs. If you have to vent, go somewhere else where you have a secretive handle and they don't know it's you. Third, COVID is not the only pandemic we have on our hands. Real estate memes are out of control. Now they're fun when shared from realtor to realtor, they're fun. But by posting those onto your business page or to your personal profile, you're either making fun of buyers or sellers, which are the ones that you wanna work with, or you're making fun of our industry and our profession. You're bringing yourself down. So please, if the meme is pointed at the negative context of a buyer, a seller, or a realtor, do not post it. Avoid the pandemic. That's like wearing a mask. Don't post a meme. Uh, everything else is fair game. I want you guys to be open and comfortable with posting as much as humanly possible because really, unless you are doing something controversial, there is nothing that can negatively impact you. The more you post, the more reach you can have. You want to spread your, 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 your feelers out. You want to spread out and pull back what you can. So the more content you can post, the better. So let's go into some details because this is the real nitty gritty. This is what you can really gain some, some true content on. Let's talk about properties. You can post, and I put this stock image on here because I hate seeing it in other people's presentations and I really just wanted to make fun of the exact stock photo that everyone uses way too much. You can post about your listings. Obviously, if you have listings, you wanna promote those. You wanna generate some type of exposure for those. Rule on that one. If you only have one listing, 
do not post your one listing three to four times a week. That is telling consumers, I have a one option person. I'm not busy. I'm putting my heart and soul into one person because I've got nothing else going on. So you want to kind of mix those up. Recommendation of mixing in properties with other content is maximum three to four times per week and make them different listings. So there's many different places that you can pull listings from to have enough content that even if you have no listings at all, you can still post content with listings. Post with your listings. If you're having an open house, post about your open house. If you're visiting an open house, that's not yours. That's okay. When you go to the house, you have a very powerful video crew that follows you around. It's called an iPhone. Take it out of your pocket. And there's a little feature called a camera. Use the camera. Go to the house. You're at an open house. Hey, Jonathan Lickstein from Location Real Estate here. I'm at a great new listing in Parkland, Florida. I wanted to share this really unique feature with you. Show the feature. Talk about it. You can't say the address because you don't have permission to advertise it, but you're there. If you're interested in a home in Parkland like this, or you're just interested or have any questions about the buying process, I'm your guy. Reach out to me. That's it. That's content. What are you showing to the consumer? That you're busy. You're out in the marketplace. You know about Parkland. This is a specific feature. Maybe they want that in a different area. You want to show that you're busy. Put yourself in the mindset of a consumer. Are you more likely to contact someone that posts things, but they're not really active and you don't see them? Or would you contact someone who comes across as being busy in the marketplace, in different properties, sharing information? You're definitely going to go with the busy one because they know more what they're doing. You have more confidence in their ability. You have more comfort in reaching out to them because you've seen them face to face. Don't be afraid. Get out from behind the camera and be in front of it. They need to see your face. At one point or another, face it, they're going to see this. So don't be shy about it. Get over that hump and get out there. Next, you can utilize company listings. What I mean by that, please check with your broker on their policies, but many brokers allow you to advertise any listing from that company. So you have a huge pool of listings that you can then go out and advertise. Pick your farming area, pick the listings, and feature those. Our local MLS has added back the OK to advertise field on Matrix. So now in both Flex and Matrix, you can find properties to advertise. Please make sure you follow MLS policies and our code of ethics on highlighting who the listing is from and uh, citing your source. But that is a really open pool of properties that you can now advertise content. You have infinite amounts of content available to you. And the last one is new construction projects, both single family homes and condos. There are two rules when you are posting new construction. Well, before I even get there, if you go visit one of these condo buildings or single family home developments and say, Hey, I'd like to market your properties to my social media network before you finish your sentence, They've given you a USB stick, a CD, an email, a Dropbox, and a ream of paper full of flyers, floor plans, graphics, marketing images. The, the amount of content they give you is absolutely ridiculous. But they're giving you the content for you that, to then go share. There are two rules when you are posting new construction developments and new construction condos. Rule number one. Do not put the name or the address of the development. Rule number two, do not put the address or the location of the development. If you do, you are simply advertising for the development for them to go around you. You want to create engagement. You want to create the, the requirement for the consumer to reach out to you. So post that information, avoid any identifiable information like logos, addresses, uh, floor models, any of that stuff. Keep it as limited as you possibly can. Reach out to me for more information kind of deal, okay? So listings and property information three to four times per week. Show that you're active in the marketplace, but don't be repetitive, okay? Any questions about properties before I move on?
And if you have questions, we can always come back to it. Moving on. Closings. Share your successes. Not only is it great to show that you're doing business and you're active and you're closing things, but your friends will be happy and you can leverage it double time. We're going to talk about that in a second. So pictures at a house or a closing. When you close on a house or you do a rental move in, ask the consumer, Hey, can I take a picture with you? Can we take a picture to post to social media? If they say yes, golden, what an opportunity because not only are you taking the picture and posting it onto your page, but you need to be tagging the customer at the same time. Leverage the South Florida mentality of keeping up with the Joneses. Leverage that. If you post and tag the consumer, what do all of their friends now want to do? Oh, Mary bought a house. I want to buy a house. And guess where it leads back to? You. So tag the consumer, take a picture. If they say yes to having their picture taken, you can post it. If they ask you to take it down, please respect that. But most of them are so overjoyed and happy about getting into a new home and achieving that American dream that they want to shout it from a mountaintop. They have no issue whatsoever. Of course, if they have confidentiality or any type of government job, something like that, that might be different. But ask them about taking a picture. They will disclose that at that time. Now, if you're closing on a sale transaction, you can do it at the house, you can do it at the conference room, you can do it outside the office. Think about social awareness, especially in the times that we're in right now. If you're gonna post a picture with your customers, unfortunately I have to tell you to wear a mask because you will get blowback from the public if you are two of you together in close proximity and not wearing masks. We have to be sensitive to the, to the social environment around us, okay? And when you post a sale closing, I mentioned tagging the customers. Tag everybody and their mother who was involved. Tag the title company, tag the lender, the home inspector, the home stager, a transaction coordinator if you used one. Tag the other agent. Just kidding, you want the promotion to come from you. So tag everybody else who was involved. What are they going to do? What does the title company want to do with you? They wanna keep earning your business. A lender wants to keep earning your business, et cetera, et cetera. So they will then engage with your posting. More engagement, higher quality score. They will engage with your posting and many of them will also share your posting or they'll post something else and tag you. Those then become linked together. It's an increased interaction with an outside business and again, brings your quality score up. Not only do you bring the quality score up, but increases your reach. Not only are you hitting your followers and your friends, but you're now hitting the customer's friends. You're now hitting followers of the title company, followers of the lender, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see where I'm going for this. Make sure after you have a closing, you ask for the testimonial. You ask for a review. A very common question I get, I'm sure somebody's typing it right now and you're laughing because I'm saying it, where is the best place to get a review from a consumer and have the maximum impact? Is it Zillow? Is it Google? Is it Realtor.com? Is it Facebook? Is it Yelp? Where is it? The answer is wherever the consumer is actually going to do it. But my top recommendations are going to be Facebook, Google, and Zillow. Yes, I said the Z word. Facebook, Google, and Zillow. Why? On all three of those pages, you have to have a confirmed consumer account separate from yours to verify and publish a review. On realtor.com, you can actually post those under recommendations, copying and pasting from outside sources. And I just don't think Yelp has the impact. So Google, Facebook, and Zillow would be my three recommended sources. But honestly, it's wherever they're going to do it. And wherever they do it, you can then leverage it again from there, which we're gonna talk about on our next slide. Um, talking about rentals and sales with closings, just don't call it a closing. New happy homeowner, new happy couple moving into their new place. You're not deceiving because you're not saying they bought a place when they rented, but you're just saying a new couple got into a new place. Brian is happy with his new place, here are your keys and try and have some fun with it. 
instead of just taking a picture, Instagram has the boomerang feature, which can be very fun. There's one realtor in my office with every posting, every closing, he has one funny thing he does on a boomerang and he shares it. And he gets so much engagement from it because it's funny. So his last one, he had this gigantic oversized champagne bottle and uh, he gave it to the customer. So in the boomerang, the customers, you know, bring it back that big champagne bottle and he is just going like this. That's it. Super simple, super simple. 274 comments. I didn't get 274 comments when my son was born. So it's engaging cause it's fun. Use it, have fun with it. Social media is meant to be fun. If you're not having fun with what you're doing, why are you doing it? Enjoy. Karen asked, what's a boomerang? So a boomerang is a, uh, a cycling video. It's very short. It's a, like two seconds and it just automatic replays. So if I start a boomerang and I go like this, just lifting my hand, the boomerang will continue to play like this nonstop. Okay. So it's very eye catching to a consumer or a viewer on the other side that is more commonly used on Instagram than it is on Facebook, but it's very, very engaging. Did I answer your question there, Karen? Moving on. Testimonials. There are many different ways to get testimonials. Obviously, we discussed the resources, Google, Facebook, and Zillow, um, as well as Realtor.com. However, wherever you get them, you can leverage it further. I see many agents who just screenshot the Zillow review and post that. That's okay. Zillow carries a name. That's fine. But you can double down and use that content elsewhere. Please don't tell me you're going to screenshot that Zillow review and place that screenshot on your website. Ugh. You need to make it a little bit more professional. So I'll give you a few examples here. Our local association has this feature called rate my agent. Rate my agent, which you can take, you create graphics and you can post those graphics. Some of the graphics look similarly to what I have here as a branding graphic. But this one is done by a broker in, I believe he's in Washington state and any comment, any review, any testimonial he gets, he has this template of exactly his company colors, his beautiful headshot here. And then he copies and pastes the testimonial into the top. So when he posts them and look on his social media accounts, there's a long history of different times when he's gotten reviews along the way. It just shows a lot of brand consistency. Uh, Rick, you're asking about a replay. I am recording this. And since you registered through the Zoom link, I'll be able to send everybody a link to watch it as many times as you wish. Okay. Um, so creating a template graphic like this is super, super easy. Very easy. There's a little program called Canva. I'm sure you've heard it 50,000 times by now, and you may or may not have had time to get in there. But Canva is a tremendously powerful program which you can use for free. There are many benefits to use the free program. There's even more benefits to do the pro, which is a whopping $12 a month, but it's a tremendous tool if you're gonna do any type of social media marketing. In fact, this entire presentation was created on Canva. So this is a graphic, you can save your template in there, drag and drop, copy and paste your testimonial every single time and build your content library. Now, this one you probably haven't heard of, and I'm gonna give you a lot of tidbits and a lot of apps and programs like this along the way that I have used personally and am a fan of. Uh, what I just discussed was Canva, C-A-N-V-A, Bonnie, C-A-N-V-A, Canva. Think Canvas without the S. So this program in the top left corner is Magnify, M-A-G-N-F-I. Yes, he's missing some vowels and it's misspelled, but that's how they do it. So this is a small startup company out of Ohio, owned by a guy named Doug. And what they do are video creation made easy. What Magnify does is gives you a portal for free, gives you a portal that you can log into, add your branding, your contact information, a call to action, and you can add your consumer's information either a phone number or an email address. This, this uh, app will then send a request to your customer saying, hey, Jonathan Lickstein would like to hear from you on what the buying process was like. You can change that text. 
but on what the buying process was like with him. They click on that. It opens and says, when you're ready, hit go. Go. Three, two, one. It starts filming them on their camera from their phone, their iPad or their laptop, whatever device they'd like to use. They can record for 30, 60, or 90 seconds, depending on the type of video you're looking for. Typically it's 30 to 60. And they'll hit done. Okay, Jonathan was the best, he's the man, you shouldn't work with anybody else, done. Right, obviously. Anyhow, so when that hits done, Maria, I'll answer that question one second. Once you hit done, that video now gets through their app, goes beep, 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 comes to you and says, hey, you have a new, a new video to review. Would you like to watch it? Yes. It opens up and it starts with your branding and a soft background music fades into the consumer's video that they recorded with some soft background music and then fades out into your branding, your contact information and your call to action all post produced automatically in two minutes from when they hit done from when it gets to you is two minutes. Fantastic. It is up to you at that point. If you like the way it came through or you like the message the customer said, you can click accept. When you click accept, there is a cost associated with it. It ranges everywhere from $12 to $30 per video. But I'll tell you, if you were to post produce a video, it's gonna cost you way more than $30 in time. So that two minute savings of your time is massive because you now have this post produced video testimonial from a customer that has all of your imagery, all of your branding, all of your contact information already on it. So you can now leverage that video and post it to your YouTube channel. You can now post that to your website. You can now post that to your Facebook and your Instagram. The amount that you can really utilize and spread that out is tremendous for 12 to $30. So I'm a huge fan of their program. It's free to set up an account, but there is a cost per video. You buy, for example, five credits, at five credits, it's like $18 a video. At 10 credits, it's like $14 a video, et cetera, et cetera. So you can contact them. I do not own that company whatsoever. I just like what they do. I think they're on the right track. Um, and what they've done more recently, instead of just doing customer testimonials, is provide an outlet for agents to record your own videos. If you wanna record a tip, for example, a buy, uh, uh, an agent tip to a buyer, three things you should know when buying a house. You can use the same platform, send yourself the link, do the recording, and it's got your branding, your video, your branding, call to action, out. So it gives you more time. Those are the 60 to 90 second videos. Uh, they're called branding videos. However, it's a platform that post produces it all together for you for free. Not for free, excuse me. Posts it all together for you in just two minutes at a small cost. So I think it's a really tremendous uh, tool to have in your pocket. And it doesn't have like watermark branding that you would get from other free apps. So it's a neat one to look into, check into it. The owner is Doug, super nice guy, love him. You can reach out and see if that would be a good option for you and your business. Any questions about these so far? Moving right along. News and articles. So on here, I have six different resources of where you can go to pull real estate related information. RAS Media, Keeping Current Matters, Real Deal, Florida Realtors, Real Trends, and NAR. Some of these you get every single day in your email. Take a look at the content that is there. Ideally, what I'd want you to do is a little bit more time consuming than most want to put into it. I want you to read the article, quote the article inside of a blog on your own website. So that way, if somebody clicks on it, they're going to your website instead of going to Florida Realtors or NAR. But that can be time, uh, time intensive. It can take a lot more. And some are not very web friendly to be able to do that on their own blog. So two other ideas would be to post that article and include at the top why that is important. Don't just rely on the header or the subject line of the article. Interest rates are at an all time low. Great, what's that mean to me, buddy? Interest rates are low. Now's a great time to buy. 
Now's a great time to sell. Consumer competition is at an all time high. That means we get more competition, which means we get a higher sale price. So there's ways to spin it on both sides, depending on what your target clientele is. The absolute must do is to read the article you're posting in its entirety. There was an agent about six months ago who posted an article about how it's a great time to buy. It's probably a little more than six months ago, sorry. Um, a great time to buy, but he didn't read the full article. If you scroll down, it says, now's a terrible time to sell. You should hold on to your home. So if you're trying to target a seller and you post that article about how buyers are going to come into the marketplace, it's also contradicting what you're saying and telling sellers that it's not a good time to sell. So read the article and make sure you agree with the entirety of it for its purpose. My favorite source on this page altogether is Keeping Current Matters. It's not a very well-known system in South Florida. It's much more utilized on the West Coast. Uh, Colorado, almost every agent uses Keeping Current Matters. In Florida, I haven't heard it a whole ton except for those very, very engaged realtors. So Keeping Current Matters is a service I believe the cost is $15 a month. Um, don't quote me on that. But they provide you infinite numbers of articles, pre-done social media content, personalized social media content, market update videos that you can utilize uh, with your branding all on it. It's a really good tool if you're going to be doing a lot of social media posting and marketing. So that's a really neat one. And the last idea when it comes to news and articles is to utilize your time in a better way. Finding articles, reading articles, and putting them out there is not really going to give you that dollar for dollar return on your investment that we spoke about. It's more going to be qualifying your business as being knowledgeable, involved, and increase your quality score. So you want to have a general flow of articles, maximum two per week, no more than that. You are not the news source. Nobody's coming to you for a compilation of what's going on in the real estate news today. One or two a week max. If you're posting other content, if you are not posting other content, then you're at a bit of a struggle right now. If all you're posting is articles, you're not going to have the impact that you want. Maria, you asked if any of the articles are in Spanish. Um, great question. I don't know. Um, there's another resource I'm going to point out called Breakthrough Broker that does have content in Spanish. So that might be a better resource for you. I don't know if Keeping Current Matters has, uh, has uh, articulos in Espanol. So that's something to check into. Okay. If you would like to auto post these articles and not have to worry about posting things every single day, using some auto posting tools like Modern Agent, Amarki, Core Listing Machine, and iExact Contact are pretty good resources. And what you can do with those is set and forget. Uh, what I mean by that is, okay, Modern Agent, I want you to post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday each week, or Tuesday and Thursday each week. I'll set that and remove the other ones so that I have a constant flow of content going into my page, and I don't necessarily have to worry about it. You can fill those other days with listings, with open houses, with closings, with testimonials, with a lot of other content. My idea today is to give you programs, to give you apps, to give you content, so you're not consistently trying to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to have to wake up in the morning and say, crap, what am I going to post today? It should be, I already have something. I can only build on top of that even more. Okay. So these are four programs. Uh, Modern Agent is free. All of the others have costs associated with them. So you can check into those. Modern Agents on your phone, it's in the App Store, it's completely free. Community information. I mean, if you're not overloaded with ideas for content now, you're really going to be shortly. So community information, market updates, talk about your farming area, talk about what's going on in your local market, talk about what's going on in your local municipality. If there's a change to phase one going to phase two, Talk about it. Hey, here's what's going on. Great news. You can now go to restaurants, things like that. If there's a local business that opens, have fun with it. We want to expand your reach. This is one of my favorite things to do. Let's say there's a new coffee shop that opened up down the street from you. Go, go into the coffee shop, walk up to the counter. 
dead serious face. I need to speak with the manager. It's kind of funny. You get a lot more of a response when you look like that than you do when you walk in with a smiling face. It shouldn't work like that, but it does. Knock. I need to speak with the manager. Okay, yes, sir. One moment, please. Go back, get the manager. As soon as they come up, you can put your realtor face on, smiling. Hey, my name's Jonathan. I'm a local realtor in your marketplace. I know you guys just opened, and I'd like to feature and share you guys with my social media network. Do you have three minutes to talk to me, or would a different time be better? They are not going to say no to this. They want the promotion. They're a new small business that needs to impact the local market, and they know realtors are the key to the community. So they will definitely agree. They may push you back until a less busier time, like three o'clock in the afternoon or just after closing or when it's quiet in the morning. Either way, that's fine. Whatever time you associate or you coordinate with them, you want to bring your film crew back with you. Remember to bring your film crew, AKA your iPhone, bring it with you. It's a video studio in your pocket. And very simply put, you can either prop it up, hold it, use a selfie stick, the most professional way to do it is to have some sort of a tripod, which you can get on Amazon for 10 bucks, sit it on the table and either have an AirPod in or headphones or make sure you're in a very quiet room. Otherwise you'll have echo, the audio will be terrible, etc. Anyways, very simply put, all you need to do is, hey, it's Jonathan, your local Boca Raton realtor. And I'm here with Steve from Steve's Coffee Shop. And Steve, tell us a little about what makes you special. Why should we come and visit and support you? And let them talk. And what you're doing with that post is you're tagging that company. How long does a video stay on a company's page on the internet? Forever. So utilize that, leverage it. Their followers will see it, the people that are following them, and their friends will see it and support them because every friend supports a small business owner who's starting. So it's a, just a different way to hit things, brand yourself as being part of the local community and expand your reach. The idea is to, to put out as many feelers as humanly possible that can come back to you as your source. Do the video, tag the business. If you're brave enough, don't just do a video. Go Facebook Live. Ooh, scary. Don't be shy. It's very easy to do a Facebook Live and people understand that you're live. You might stumble, you might stutter, you might misspeak. It's okay. Facebook Live gets a three times more interaction than videos and images. So when in doubt, Instagram or Facebook, go live. Now, posting about you. We're going to get a little uncomfortable here. Everybody in this class, everybody on this earth, has their own personality, has their own interests, has their own hobbies. As long as you have a non R plus rated hobby, uh, you're not going to diffuse or refuse business by sharing what you're interested in. For example, I spend pretty much every waking moment outside of business with my two boys and living in their life with baseball, with friends, with adventures and roughhousing. So that's my personality. That's who I am. So I will share that. Will anyone not work with me because I have kids? No. Will anyone not work with me because I coach youth sports or play baseball? No. If you like gardening, will anyone not work with you because you're a gardener? No. But could someone work with you because you are a gardener? And they are too, very possible. Connect with people, connect. Odds are someone will see you doing something that they resonate with. They will be more comfortable to reach out to you. They'll be more confident when they do so because they know your face and they know they have a connection. Here's a great example. Are you more likely to convert an online lead or a personal referral? Personal referral because you have something in common. They're coming into the relationship already feeling a certain level of comfort. That's probably the extreme example, but it's along those lines. People feel comfortable because there is a connection. There is something. So if you meet someone, for example, through a school, you have kids that go to the same school, 
that deal is so much more likely to convert than somebody who called you on Zillow. It just is. You have a connection. They already trust you because you have a similar interest. Embrace who you are in your business. When you got your real estate license, that separation between personal and business dissipated. You are your business. Your business is you. You need to embrace your personal interests. If you are out and you're at a home, you can tie in landscaping. If you're a gardener, if you have a green thumb, tie in the landscaping on every posting or every listing you put out there. Talk about the plants that are there. It will resonate with those who have the same interests. They're more likely to engage with you. They're more likely to start a conversation. And that's what we really want. Some people have gifts, ballroom dancers. I am not a professional dancer whatsoever, but you can make that part of your brand. I'll give you an example. Um, I have a realtor in Colorado who's a fitness enthusiast. She loves running. Never had a social media profile before. Then she got into real estate. Says, Jonathan, every morning I wake up, I go for my run, and then I think, what do I need to do to grow my business? And I said, you already did. Leverage what you're already doing. Running and fitness is a complete niche all in itself. Post about your run. Relate that back to real estate. I ran today. Here was my path. Here's what I saw along the way. A house. I love this architecture. I love this landscaping. Come join us. She started a running club. She went from two people every morning, just her and her friend. She now has a group of 25 that meets up every morning for their run at the local park. All of her business is from referral from that running club. She made six figures last year. Is it worth her time to post every day about running? Yes, it was. So think about your hobbies. Think about your interests and bring that into your business. No one will not work with you because you have hobbies, because you're a human being. But it's possible that somebody else will. Embrace it. Moving on. Infographics. This is a resource. Uh, Maria, I was talking about this one before for Spanish. Uh, Breakthrough Broker, I know it's really blurry. I had to blow it up, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but Breakthrough Broker has a library of templates, infographics, both in English and in Spanish that you can personalize to your own branding. This is additional content that you can post. This is additional content you can put onto your website. Okay, that's really all I'm gonna spend on that. I wanna make sure we get into the advertising. I don't wanna waste your time. Yeah. Methods of posting. When we're talking about Facebook, the number one method of content is Facebook Live. You get, on average, a three time larger engagement from your consumers than you do on a video or a picture. Reason being, when you click that little live button, anyone who's connected or following you gets a notification saying, Jonathan Lickstein is now live and a pop-up on their phone to join in one click. Meanwhile, with a video or an image, you're hoping it pops up on their feed and they watch it. Facebook Live is like posting a video and saying, hey, look at me. That's why it gets more engagement. <clears throat> on Instagram, Instagram TV is a tremendous feature that's been out for a while, but it's like the YouTube of Facebook. You can post longer videos, same kind of tagging mentality of Instagram, and it stays on your profile. When you have a library of minimum six Instagram TV videos on your profile, your profile score jumps up and your hashtags increase their efficacy. So doing some Instagram TV videos is a very, very good idea. You can use the same videos from YouTube on Instagram TV. The one thing to understand is YouTube goes like this, meaning your videos are recorded in a landscape format. On Instagram TV, it's vertical. So you have to go with a vertical style video. It can be the same exact video, but with a different format. So just think about that when you're recording where you're going to be posting it. YouTube, when we're talking about videos, is absolutely the bar. It is the name of the game. Uh, YouTube is owned by Google, so the keyword management in the titles and the description are of the utmost importance to your optimization of your video. YouTube videos carry a lot of content behind the scenes, and when you post those and embed those onto your website, 
they increase your organic optimization of your website and allow you to go um, and allow you to double down and be found more organically. If you have done a Google search in the last year, which I'm sure everybody here has, the number one results that come in at the top are videos. Videos are king. They have the most engagement. They have the most viewership. So videos come up first. And by putting more keywords, putting more into your title, you're more likely to appear and receive and achieve that viewer. So don't be shy. Again, you need to get out from behind the camera. A video that is a screen does not do well. A video that is you in an engaging manner does well. So don't be afraid. Creating content. Um, some will just take a picture and post it and that's not terrible. It's better than not doing it at all. But if you want to come across and have that certain brand image or edit your photos, place graphics, place stickers, you wonder how people do that. There are so many different apps that you can utilize to get those done, but I'm gonna give you three really simple ones. In the bottom right corner is PhotoFi. PhotoFi is a free benefit that our local association has done for us and is available as a phone app for you to customize some materials and post it to your social media outlets. It's really simple, but there's not that much content on there, so it's not like an end-all be-all, but it is a partial solution. On the top right is Canva. I mentioned that before. Canva, I, I swear by it, on my phone, on a computer. I love Canva. There's endless things that you can do with it. There's endless stickers, endless stock photos, videos, animations, of which you'll see some later in the presentation, but it's really, really powerful for you to utilize on your phone or on a computer. The left side is Fiverr, which is more for if you've used Fiverr, congrats, it's a pretty cool service. If you haven't, it is essentially a classified, uh, classified ads place where free uh, freelancers from around the world will post anything that they're willing to do, which is generally digital related, graphic design, video editing, voiceovers, things like that. Um, anything that they're willing to do, everything starts at $5. That's why it's called Fiverr. Many, many things are available from five to $15. Great resource. It's probably the best resource on here if you don't have you know, drag and drop or graphic design or any type of that kind of creativity. Fiverr, they'll do it all for you. You order it, you tell them what you want, and you pay for it when you're happy with it. So it's a pretty good resource for content creation as well. Images, you want to have very colorful, very engaging images. And if you haven't had many listings, your library of photos is probably not that big. Please, 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 do not go to Google, search and use those photos. You will have problems, I promise you. Whether it's today or a year from now, you'll be named in a lawsuit. You don't want that. So here are three websites where you can uh, pull royalty-free images. And on two of them, I've indicated with a little video camera. You can also get stock videos. These are databases of photographers and videographers from around the world submitting their content to these services to be utilized. What they're asking for is to credit them. So if you happen to use a picture in your Instagram post, credit the photographer, photo credit, name of the person, done. And you have an un unbelievable library of content to then utilize in any marketing piece. Flyers, postcards, websites, social media posting, social media ads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's really, really a lot in there. So you can browse those three for photos or videos on the bottom two. Moving on. Let's make things a little bit easier. Jonathan, I just don't think that posting on Instagram once a day and posting my business page once a day and posting on my, uh, my Facebook personal profile once a day, I, I ain't got time for that. You're right, you probably don't. Most busy, busy realtors don't have the time. So let's think about making things a little bit easier. We'll get three for the price of two. When you go onto Instagram, you can connect your Instagram profile with your Facebook profile. So when you post on Instagram, it can automatically post exactly what you did on Instagram now on Facebook. Now, when you're tying those together, tie your Instagram profile 
to your Facebook business page, not your personal profile. You want to make sure that you have a business page on Facebook for a few reasons. Number one, you can't do paid advertisements on Facebook or Instagram without a business account. If all you do is post on your personal profile, everything you're doing is for naught. None of it goes towards your quality score. None of it goes towards your advertising gain. So from your Instagram profile to your Facebook business page. The second step would be going onto your Facebook business page and sharing from your business page to your personal profile. Why? They're just gonna see my name twice. Because on social media, your friends and your followers are your sphere of influence. Everyone tells you when you get your license, your first deal is likely to come from your sphere of influence. This is a great way to stay in front of your friends, to stay in front of your personal people without being the pushy person. Hey Susie, how are you? You want to get together Friday? Yeah. Do you know anyone who's looking to buy a house? That's, you're not going to do that. It's very intrusive. They stop answering the phone and you, you lose friends that way. So posting and sharing from your business profile to your personal profile is a great way to stay in front of your friends. Okay. Three for the price of two. Any questions about that? Is it the same to share from my personal to my business? No, you can't do that. The idea is post to your business, share to your personal. You want to bring your personal friends to your business. You don't want to bring your business followers to your personal life. So one way, not the other. Good question, Louise. Let's make life easier even more. Making things easier part two. There are two programs on your screen, Hootsuite and Buffer. They're both really expensive. They're free. The difference between the two, as you can see on your screen with Buffer, you are able to have three social profiles, three social profiles, meaning a Facebook and Instagram and a YouTube, a LinkedIn, a Twitter, whatever you want that third one to be. Um, they have a list of, I believe, eight different outlets that you can utilize. And you can schedule 10 posts at a time, 10 posts per outlet. So I can pre-schedule 10 postings to my Facebook business page. And as soon as that time hits, Buffer will now auto post that, that, uh, that content to my page. Where it's really, really helpful is on Instagram. On Instagram, the app does not allow you to post schedule content. You have to do it on the spot. But utilizing these two apps, either one, pick one, you don't need both. And it's a personal preference between the two. Um, by doing and working through these apps, you can schedule them because it's the app that's scheduling them and sending it to Instagram. It's not Instagram being scheduled. So this is a little workaround. If you are a time blocker or you do one day a week, you set all your marketing up for the following week or one day a month, you set up all your content for the following month. These are great resources to do that. Be able to sit down, plan out some pre-done content and fill in in between with what's going on that day or where you are, okay? I personally like Hootsuite a little bit more, um, mostly because it's not limiting me to 10 per outlet. It's giving me 30 across the board. I can use the same social profiles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, et cetera, but that 30 allows me to fluctuate. For example, I could do 25 on Instagram and five on Facebook, as opposed to being limited at 10 each gives you more flexibility. Um, I also like the Hootsuite pro, uh, portal a little bit more. I think it's a little easier to use, but again, this is all personal preference. Now these are limitations on the free accounts. There are upgrades available. They're both shy of $20, $25 for the lowest number. And there is absolutely no way that you're going to post schedule over a hundred posts. I'm sorry. We're not, you know, we're not million followers, social media influencers. We don't need to schedule 20 posts a day for the next month. 30 posts at one time. Karen asked, how to bring friends to your business Facebook page and not the way, not the other way around. That is, that is what you achieve by posting on your business page and sharing from your business page to your personal profile. Once you've posted on the business page, you have to actually go to the page 
and click the share button at the bottom corner of the post. You can then select your personal profile to put it on your wall and it will pass through, meaning any of your personal friends who click on that will be taken to your business page. That is how you bring the personal into the business. With Instagram, it's one profile. You convert your personal profile on Instagram to a business. Uh, it's a few clicks. Please Google that, uh, a YouTube video on how to convert that. I don't want to spend our time on it since I am truncating this class. Um, but uh, it's one profile, so you're not sharing it in between. You're just doing one. Uh, but the common question I get on Instagram is, should I have two separate ones, one personal, one business? In my opinion, that's a no. I do it all in one. But then again, I am of the perception that personal and business are hand in hand. I'm just not going to post myself going and getting drunk in Miami, for example, because it'll go out to my business customers as well. I will put things out that apply for both. I post pictures of my children. Not worried about it. That's a personal preference. You make that decision for yourself. But I want to bring in my sphere of influence. So I'll convert my personal to a business and continue utilizing it. But that's my personal recommendation. You have to make your own deduction on that. Any questions on Hootsuite or Buffer? Seeing none, moving on. Growing your audience organically. There are things that you can do to help build more followers on your business page. Um, Lisa, is my Instagram page public? Absolutely. When you convert your Instagram page from personal to, to business, you can't make it private. It is public no matter what. The benefit with switching your Instagram page from a personal to a business are a few things. Number one, you can see additional insights as to demographics of who your consumers and your followers are. You can see how people find your postings, if it's from hashtags, if it's from looking at your profile, if it's somebody who's already following you, if it's a new consumer, a new user. Um, you can also do paid advertisements and it gives your contact information. We want people to reach out to us. So by having a business profile, you have a single click call, a single click email, and the ability to add additional information to your profile. So I really think everybody's Instagram profile should be a business profile, but that's my opinion. Uh, Claudia asked, do I need a business Instagram account to share automatically the Facebook business? Yes, business to business, personal to personal. It's a very, very easy, quick switch. Um, simply look on YouTube. See, I'm already citing YouTube. Simply look on YouTube for convert Instagram to business, and it will give you a step-by-step walkthrough. Um, it's really not hard. It's literally a few clicks, select your Facebook business page, and you're done. So let's talk about ways to grow your audience. Now we're talking about business pages here, um, mostly geared towards Facebook. How to grow your audience and your reach organically. Number one, branding consistency. We as realtors create infinite numbers of marketing materials. We put out flyers, we do door hangers, just sold, just listed, email marketing, email follow-ups. We exchange 5,000 emails on every single transaction. So you have an email signature, you have a business card, you have a real estate sign, you have magnets on your cards. All of these places are marketing pieces. They're all collateral. And if you are active on Facebook, if you are active on Instagram, if you are active on YouTube, the links and logos should be readily apparent on all of these marketing pieces. At the absolute minimum, at least put the logo of the source. If you're active on Facebook, put Facebook or find me on Facebook logo. They're nationally recognized, internationally recognized logos. So when someone sees it, they know they can look you up there. And as the millennial demographic gets bigger and bigger and bigger, I believe it was 46% of first time buyers were all millennials. That is a huge bulk in 2019. That is a huge bulk of our marketplace. So appeal to those millennials. It's getting more and more common when you go to a restaurant and you have to scan a QR code in order to get the menu. We are all leveraging technology, embrace it. Join groups and interact. Joining local groups like HOAs, Maybe you're interested in something. I am a big fan of the color yellow. It's my favorite color. It's a very happy color. And joining a group that is, I love yellow, for example, allows me to interact with other people that have a common interest. That's not really a good example pertaining to real estate, but it could be a Boca Moms Club, a Boca Dads Club, 
I'm a member of a Boca Dads club. Could be your local association. It could be first time buyers. It could be youth sports parents. It could be fans of yoga. It could be painters, gardeners in Boca. It could be anything that you want. There's a Facebook group that applies to any interest that you have in your local area and interact. Joining a group, a Facebook group, for example, and not saying anything is like going into a party and standing in a corner. If you go to a party and you stand in a corner, how many people remember you? Zero. If you go to a party and you interact, you have the chance of great conversations. You have the chance to build a relationship. And that is the absolute name of the game. You got to start conversations. If you post something and someone agrees with you or like what you said, you're probably going to get a friend request or a new follow. So be active. We're realtors. We are not shy to speak our mind. Put it out there. Be interacting and engaging with questions and topics and ideas. Third one, embrace social media with customers. When you meet someone, I might be a little bit intrusive with this, but back, I'm a non-compete now, but when I was working with customers and I got a lead come through from Zillow or Realtor.com, first thing I would do would call them, right? The three minute rule. But if they didn't answer, or even if they did, I would then go to Facebook and friend request them. It seems a little intrusive. It's not. If there's any familiarity, I want them to get more comfortable with me. When they see my friend request and they get my voicemail, it's putting two and two together and it's allowing them to get to know me before they talk to me. It gives me an in, it gives me a conversation piece. Okay. So embrace that with customers. You may want to wait until you go and meet someone face to face. I'm not worried about the personal business separation and I don't think you should be either. But if you are, wait, wait till you work with someone and then friend them. For me, the bigger network I have, the bigger chance I have to earn business. So I'm friending everybody humanly possible um, in my area given. Last one is sphere of influence. We talked about that in sharing from your business to your personal. Uh, your friends and followers are your sphere of influence on social media. Feed them content, give them a reason to click through. I'll give you an example. Um, I have mentioned I'm very active in youth sports in Little League in Boca Raton. Love youth baseball. It's how I get to live where I wasn't able to physically continue. So every time I, I coach a team, for example, and I want to take pictures and share that we're at the field or some craziness in the dugout or things like that, I don't just post that to my personal page. I'm a father first and a broker second. So I post that information to my business page and share it from my business to my personal. You might think, what does that have to do with real estate? You know what it has to do with real estate? People. People drive real estate. So I want to bring them to my business page. Any possible chance that I can have to get additional eyes into my business, I'm going to do that. So posting to the business, sharing it to the personal. So the parents who want to see pictures of their kids have to go through my business. And without me soliciting them, they already know what I do, where I am, how to get a hold of me, and we have a trust connection. That's my purpose. All right. This was all about creating organic content, trying to gain organic followers and increase your quality score. We are now at the point where we've increased our quality score and we want to get into paid advertisements. Uh, Karen, your question was, do you friend request Facebook business page and Instagram page separately? So I don't do that on Instagram. Um, I don't, I wait and I do it on Facebook. Um, and more when I get to know them is when that will come through or the exchange of communication is when they see the Instagram stuff and can click through. I do that more on Facebook because of the widespread. I know whether the customer is 21 or 71 or 81, I'm going to be able to find them by their name on Facebook. And that's not necessarily always the case on Instagram. So I start with Facebook and from there they can always search and see more. But if I can have them on Facebook, I can leverage their information for a lot more. So it's more on Facebook than Instagram, if that answers your question. Um, advertising, it's two directions that you can go. We're now going into paid ads, okay? Both on Instagram and Facebook. You can go one direction or another. You can either go that way and pay a company to do it for you and give you some reviews on different companies, or you can go that way 
and try and do it yourself. I have been doing Facebook ads and Instagram ads for years and I've spent and wasted a lot of money. Learn from my mistakes. Companies through the years have developed and learned the proper algorithms and audiences to get results, to get clicks. Obviously, if you advertise with them and you don't have success, you won't be continuing. So they've really dialed that into the point where they can really make it beneficial dollar for dollar for you. So it's of my opinion to try and go with a company instead of doing it yourself or doing a combination thereof. You'll end up getting more leads from the company that does it for you, but you may gain a larger audience by doing it yourself because you can cast a wider net, but it won't be as many valid people directly for what you're looking for, if that makes any sense. It will as we get further into it. Uh, most companies that you do pay for advertising will do ads on three major categories. It will be home valuations. It will be uh, buyer and seller guides like how-to eBooks, and it will be listings. That's really it. That's what they focus on because that's the easiest thing for them to do and drive traffic and clicks and contact forms. While you can do things a little bit more widespread, you can do things a little bit differently, and we're going to jump into that. So managed ads, if you'd like a company to handle the advertising for you or work with you on creating the content, here are four resources for you. The first one is justlisted.social. That is a benefit from Florida Realtors. It's essentially a discount on the retail price and you can set up a rule with them. For example, you can pick properties, either your own listings or listings appropriate for advertising from the MLS or from your company to auto post listing ads on Facebook and Facebook's network. These are pretty successful. Um, average cost per lead runs between six and $10 in my history, uh, but they've been, again, those 12 to 18 month timeline kind of people. So you need to think ahead and say, when I get a lead, where is it going? When it's there, what's happening with it? If I don't get them on the phone, what type of buyer or seller is this? what kind of campaign will resonate or appeal to them. So spend a little bit of time figuring out the, the infrastructure or the, the base before you just jump in and start spending money on it. Um, you need to have that follow-up procedure in place. Okay. It's a really simple, easy to use platform and their customer support's pretty good. Um, again, I get no benefit from any of these. I'm just sharing my experience. Uh, visual farming on the top right corner, I'm going to talk about last and I'm going to do it on purpose. Uh, the next one below that is KV Core. KV Core, Boomtown, Commission Zinc, Market Leader, all of these different web platforms have front end websites, back end contact management, drip campaigns, and social media ad management. They're very expensive platforms. Many of you are members of companies that give it to you at a discount or for free. And if you have that option, take advantage of it. Out of all four of these, it is by far the most successful advertising on social media that I have seen. And if you have access to any of these, throw out any idea you have of self-advertising and do it through them. The average is four to six dollars, four to six dollars per lead. That is tremendous. Granted, the conversion rate is lower, but not that much lower than what you get off of any other online lead. Roughly five to eight percent, where typically you'll see three to five percent. So not that much different and a huge dollar for dollar benefit. Uh, take it out of your hands, let them drive it, let it bring back in. I'm talking about KV Core right now, Maria. KV Core, Commission Zinc, Boomtown. They're all kind of on the same playing field. Uh, the one on the bottom, Modern Agent, I did talk about before when auto posting articles. It's kind of a neat little template, uh, a neat little app that you have on your phone. Uh, they're a startup company um, created by a few of the marketing team, uh, former marketing team members from Realtor.com and Top Producer. So it's kind of an interesting mix of minds. Um, they're a startup based in Canada, I believe it's British Columbia. And they have both organic article postings as well as paid advertisement. And the beautiful part of their app is the fee is zero. Uh, they make their money because they have a deal with Facebook and they get a percentage of ad spend. 
So it comes out of Facebook's pocket, not yours. So that's kind of neat. Um, Elena, my favorite was in the middle, KB Core, the platform in the middle. Uh, KB Core, Boomtown, and Commission Zinc have tremendous, have tremendous social media advertising um, portals to do it for you. Oh, okay. I also mentioned uh, visual farming up top. You're correct. So visual farming up top is kind of unique. And what I mean by that is it's a combo. Let's say you don't have a website. Visual farming can help you with that because the mentality within advertisement on social media is I have one goal and one goal alone, which is starting a conversation. In order for me to start that conversation, I need your contact information. So you can either use a contact form through Facebook or a landing page, which we're going to talk about after this. Okay. Visual farming combines the two of them. It manages a landing page and Facebook advertising all together. And it ties one back to the other and syncs with a CRM. It does 50% billing for a lender to cooperate with you. It's very, very conducive to a realtor's advertising on social media. Andrea, yes, I am recording this and you'll get a link follow up to this, uh, to this class. Um, if you register it on the Zoom page, you're going to get a follow up email with the recording. Okay. So on here, simple and easy, modern agent, simple and easy, just listed dot social is simple and easy for listing ads. Visual farming is kind of like the Cadillac of what we're talking about. But then again, KV core is like the Tesla. It is way over and above. Um, Paul, you had a question in KB Core. If you chose one marketing project, what would it be? It's a great question. If you already have KB Core, Property Boost is the name of my favorite marketing method through there. It's called Property Boost. It allows you to do either one of two things. You can either pick an individual listing and choose to market that, or you can set parameters that anytime you post a listing into the system between a certain price point in a certain area, it will automatically place advertising dollars behind it for two, three, seven, or 10 days. That's starting at 35, 60, 85, and 150. And they are tremendously effective. But a lot of the, the portals that I'm talking about here have something very similar. I just, I've been more successful through KB Core in doing that. Uh, but again, Commissions Inc. does the same thing and so does Boomtown. So as long as you have an all-in-one system, you're gonna be able to have that. Okay. Oops, clear. X, go. If you are trying to drive your own paid advertisements, Maria, I love that you have KB Core and Core Listing Machine. I do too, and I love the combo. Um, self driven paid ads. If you're going to try and do it yourself, which you may need to do anyways, if you have a different idea or a different concept, which we're about to go into next, Ad Espresso in the bottom right is owned by Hootsuite. If you remember Hootsuite, we were talking about how easy it is to post organic content. Well, Ad Espresso went a step above and they manage very, very easily your, or your, your social media advertising, both through Facebook, Instagram as well. I like Ad Espresso. It's very good. The tracking and the demographics and the insights that you can see off of it are tremendous. If you are not going to be dedicated and active in there, both creating the content and following up on the content, don't waste your money. You can use some of these other sources that are set it and forget it. Ad Espresso doesn't require you, but it really needs you to go back in there and change things constantly to keep it being effective. Otherwise you get very stagnant and stale content that, that loses its efficacy over time because people are seeing the same thing over and over again. You need to change the content and shock them a little bit, hit them in a different angle, a different ad, a different color, a different picture, different wording will resonate will different, with different people. So one message will not work across the board, but that's a great resource if you want to do it yourself. One piece of advice, do not go through Facebook's ad manager. It is incredibly confusing and you will end up spinning your head and not putting a budget limit and you'll spend $1,500 and not know what hit you. So I really don't suggest going through Facebook's ad manager. Ad Espresso is a good alternative. Okay, 
there are two types of advertisements that find great success on Instagram and Facebook. One of them are listings. The hot point on listings, in my opinion, in my experience, has been a listing between the price of 200,000, and don't laugh at me, 476,000 on the dot. I know it's weird, but 480,000, my cost per lead went up to over $30 a lead. Whereas 476 to 200, I was from four and a quarter to 575. So it jumped extensively once you pass that 476 mark. I haven't tried 479, I didn't have a listing to test at that point. But 476 was that hot point for me. Anywhere in between there, you're hitting a huge bulk of the marketplace, a huge amount of users that you will have leads come in and keeping your cost per click down. That's talking about listing ads. Other than that, the concept of what is called a digital magnet is the second most effective manner. Digital magnets can come in different formats. Essentially, a digital magnet, it functions like a scientific magnet something that you're putting out there that attracts. So something of value that I'm hanging out there, I'm dangling the carrot. Hey, if you want this, I want your contact information in return. That is a digital magnet. Digital magnets can come in many different forms. Some of those forms are free, free home valuations. What's your home worth? How much equity do you have in your home? There's many different ways to put that. Ebooks like buyer and seller guides. Do you remember, think back to when you bought your first home or maybe you were helping your child, your kid, your nephew, your cousin, your brother, somebody buy their first home. As soon as they make that mental click that they're gonna buy a house, they are all of a sudden obsessed with that fact. They're browsing Zillow at one o'clock in the morning and sending you 27 listings. They're looking at getting pre-approved and interest rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're obsessed with it. So if you dangle in front of them, 10 things you should know before buying, 10 things to set yourself up to buy, 10 things to do before selling, five reasons to stage your home when you're selling it, things like this. When a member of the public decides they're going to buy or sell, they want to know anything and everything. So feed them what they want, give them the content. Hey, to receive this free ebook, please put in your email and we'll send it to you. Thank you. Next, renting versus buying conversions. Stop wasting your money on rental, converting over to buying, how to do that. Rebates and certificates, this is a big one. We don't like to give away our money, historically. But if I were to tell you, I'll give you $6,000 if you give me one when you get it, would you do that? If your answer is no, we have a problem. If I give you 6,000, I want you to give me back one. That is a rebate or certificate. Great ways to set that up are on benefits programs. You've all heard of Homes for Heroes, which are cashback benefits at closing for veterans and first responders. Setting up a benefit program like that. Boca Raton homeowners, Boca Raton home purchasers get $1,500 back at closing. What's the average purchase price in Boca Raton? I'm gonna throw a number, 400,000. Random number, probably a little more than that, but 400,000. What's the 3% commission on 400,000? $12,000. If I give you $12,000, would you give me $1,500 back? Thank you, come again. Last item, a contest for X benefit, a consumer type benefit. Insert here, register here for a raffle for X. Insert here for a contest to be enter a drawing for a free appraisal, to enter a drawing for a free gas grill when you buy a house. As long as you're disclosing the terms that they need to get that prize, for example, asterisk, must close on home with X company prior to December 31st of this year. Things like that. Consumers and members of the public will sign up for that if they're looking to buy a house, if they're looking to sell a house. A contest. Leverage the vendors and the relationships that you have. If you've done any transactions in your history, you've worked with a lender, you've worked with a title company. Ask them, what do you give to agents? What do you give to consumers? 
there are dozens of lenders out there that give away free appraisals with every transaction. They just cover it. It's part of their marketing pitch. Great. Buy with me and get a free appraisal. Asterisk, must use so-and-so for loan approval. These are just concepts, things of value that you can give without really causing a big impact on your bottom line. Any questions about these before I go into some content examples for these ads? Good. Here's an example. Oh, it didn't come up. Ah, I had a logo in the bottom right corner, sorry. So here's an example. I created this in 120 seconds on Canva. Grabbed a stock image, a plain background, a little bit of animations to catch your eye. I apologize, there is something in the bottom right corner that's not populating. Um, anyhow, this is your graphic. The problem with Facebook advertising is there's a limitation to the value of text that you can have on the graphic. The text is meant to be in the caption or the comment or the tagline. In the image itself, it's just meant to be an engaging or, or um, capturing attention, uh, colors, pictures, things like that. This is a terrible advertisement. I created it in 120 seconds, but it's an example of things that you can do and how simple your graphics should be. It's mainly meant to catch eyes. It catches eyes, they read if it's applicable, click if they want. That's the idea, casting your net out. Here's another example. This one does pass Facebook's guidelines of percentages. Very simply put, looks like a couple going in to look at a house, pretty nice looking house. I love the guy's shoes, but regardless, it says free buyer guide in the text, looking to buy a house, here are 10 things you should know. Click to have it emailed to you instantly. If someone's looking to buy, they're obsessed. They want that information. What does this person know that I don't? What does this person know that I haven't seen somewhere else? These are digital magnet examples. I'm just, again, I created this one in less than two minutes on Canva as well. Next one, buying a house, want to save $1,000. Oh, my picture didn't come up either. It was a beautiful picture of a lady with a realtor sign behind this one. Uh, buying a house, want to save $1,000. How eye-catching is the dollars and the coins dropping? It catches your eye. The idea is to catch the eye, make them read, make them click. Now, again, like we talked about in the beginning, the infrastructure of your advertising campaign is paramount to the success of your campaign. If they simply click, you will have nowhere to go from there. And then you're mental, manually entering things to your CRM and you're just spinning your wheels. You need to have it feeding from an ad to a landing page to your CRM. That is the general flow. Ad, click, landing page. Here is how you get exactly what you clicked on. Submit. That goes into your CRM and triggers your campaigns, triggers your follow-ups and labels how they got to you. That's why a CRM is there. So clicks to landing pages. What is a landing page? Simply put, a landing page is a single page on a website that does not allow the consumer to go anywhere else. There's no menu on the top. There's no search bar. There's no address bar. There's no additional links or, me or menu items. It's a simple message that matches the ad they clicked on, a contact form, and a submit button. For example, they clicked on getting a buyer guide, top 10 things to know when buying a house. Here is how you get, please put in your email address to get your free buyer guide now. Contact form, get your, get now, receive now, submit, get my guide, any of those. Simple message that confirms you clicked on this, here's where you are, put in your contact information to get it and give it to me. Here's a few examples of landing pages. Top right corner is a home valuation landing page. They clicked on what's my home worth. <laughs> Thanks Yvonne, I know it's a lot of content. It's a lot of information. Um, and I also have a more advanced one where we go through and actually create the ads, but we don't have it on the calendar yet with, uh, with the association. Anyhow, so the top right corner is a home valuation. What's my home worth? Click on it, takes you to this landing page. Very simply put, address you want a valuation of, Name, email, phone number, give it to me. Great landing page. 
is it legal to offer combinations for sellers such as a free appraisal or digital staging for vacant homes and if you're a buyer thousand towards closing costs that is a decision for you to discuss with your broker but it is legal to do so um, on the left side we have another landing page so this is both a good landing page and a bad landing page consumers very easily get distracted so you can kind of see on this one on the top left let me give you a highlight you can see here on the top left that this is a pop out or a pop up in front of the general web page. It is very simple. Selling, here's how to get complimentary staging. Your name, your email, your phone number, get it. The problem is they overlaid this on your website. So as a consumer, my eyes instantly went to what's behind here because this is more eye catching than the box that's in front of me and they give me the option to X this out and browse. The problem is when I X this out, I no longer have that offer in my face and I then have to go find it. Average consumer will not find it. They'll get distracted, forget why they got there and leave. So you just shot yourself in the foot. I will tell you the difference between the right landing page and the left landing page is an average conversion rate of 27%. Statistics show if you send it to an average website where there are additional links, your conversion rate will average out at 0.1% of consumers. Horrible. What a waste of money. Top right, 26 times more. Shopify is another example on the bottom here. This one's really, really simple to get yourself started. If you want a buyer or seller guide, comes in, has your logo on the top, get 10 tips on, on how to, what to know before buying or selling your home, insert your email address to get it, email, go, done. That's it. Those are examples of different landing pages. They can come in many different formats. Jonathan, that's all fine and dandy, but how do I make one of those? I'm not a web programmer or developer. Well, that's a great question. Here are six ways for you to create landing pages. I mentioned visual farming at the beginning and I'll, I'll reiterate again. The reason I like them is they take those main three topics, home valuation, listings, and um, e-guides, e-books, uh, buyer guides and seller guides, and they create landing pages with them. The best part about their landing pages is the automation. Let's say I do a home valuation landing page. Someone comes through, they click, they put their information. If I get an email that they want a valuation, by the time I read that email, it's already too late. That needs to be instant. If you submit a contact form on a website, when do you expect to get a response? Right now. That is the demand. We are in an on-demand society here. So visual farming allows you to upload a buyer guide or a seller guide for that landing page. So when someone signs up, it sends the contact to your CRM and sends them the email with the buyer guide or seller guide attached to it. So it's automatic. They've already hit it. Then you can follow up by phone or by text message wanting to make sure that they got the guide. Gives you an excuse to reach out. On the home valuations, it integrates with RPR. If you're familiar with RPR, they have really nice, simple reports. So they put in a home valuation. It will send them the basic seller's market report. I believe it's six pages uh, with a range of value that gives you an excuse to reach out. Hey, Mr. Smith, did you, I wanted to check in with you. You should have gotten your home valuation. I know it's a range of value. I can get it within $5,000. Do you have 15 minutes that we can meet? Boom. Listing appointment, baby. That's the idea. Okay. It's automating it. Instant gratification to the consumer. The other five, I'll go over lead pages, Insta page, lead pages, Insta page, and unbounce are all pay per landing page creation, ranging anywhere from 10 to $25 each landing page. One time, there it is, there's your landing page. If you have a custom website, of course, you can create as many landing pages as you want but you, will, you might have to go through your web developer or you may be familiar enough to create those on your own depending on the platform it's created in. The easiest, if you don't have a website, is utilizing Facebook's contact forms. 
The nice part about that is when you have an ad and someone clicks on it, if you're using Facebook contact forms, it auto fills that information based on their profile, the email address they log into Facebook with and their phone number registered on their account. So the validity of the information is generally pretty high. Uh, that's something to consider, but you then have to take those Facebook contact forms and separately tie that into your CRM. So it's good for one reason, bad for another. It's all personal preference and what's going to work with your flow. The main thing is getting them to click on it in the first place. Any questions about landing pages as I go on? I know it's after four o'clock, but I really only have three slides left, so we'll get there. Okay, where to market to? When you are doing Facebook advertisements, and I'll talk about Instagram in a second, when we're talking about in, uh, Facebook advertisements, you have three different options of audiences that you can market to. The first option is the new audiences. This is utilizing Facebook's, uh, this is utilizing Facebook's algorithms and categories to define the audience that you would like your ad to appear in front of. Now, because of all of the fair housing changes that have come about uh, with Facebook and HUD, that has been severely, severely restricted. Real estate advertisements are categorized as special advertising categories, which limits our abilities extensively. You used to be like Big Brother where you could infiltrate in people's lives and pick based on the music they liked. It was intense, but now it's been restricted. You cannot restrict your advertisement by age or gender. You can only get your geographic region down to 15 mile radiuses. 15 miles is a huge, huge area. And the only interest that you can utilize, anything that applies to real estate are four of them. Real estate, apartments, house, and renting. Those are the only four categories that have anything remotely to do with real estate. So you're generally casting a very wide net. If you are going to use this method with new audiences, think of something very generic not area specific, meaning don't use this one for an open house. Don't use this one for a listing because unless they're looking in that area specifically, it is not effective. Think more conceptual, the rebates, the credits, the buyer guide, the seller guide, the home valuation, all of those are very good for new audiences because you're casting a wide net where it applies to everybody. Custom audiences. My favorite by far, if you've been in the business for a couple of years, you have a database of contacts through your CRM. You can export that contact list, upload that contact list into Facebook and market directly only to users with those email addresses. It gives you a dollar for dollar bang for your buck because you know they're real. And if it doesn't apply to a Facebook account, you're not spending money on that person. So you're hitting people that already have name recognition, no like and trust. They already know who you are. It's familiar and you're hitting them from a different side. That's a great tool. Now, I want to leverage this ability with another program, with another app, because I only know who I know, but I want to meet new people. So there are systems out there. Have you heard of Red X? Have you heard of Cole Realty Resources? Cole is probably my favorite. I'm a little biased towards them because I use them. But with Cole Realty Resources, I pay one flat annual fee and I have access to homeowners information, cell phones, email addresses, physical addresses, home phones, et cetera, anywhere that I want to look, anywhere in the United States. It's unbelievable. So you pick the area that you want to market to, download that contact information, upload that contact information into Facebook, and I'm marketing directly to the ones that I want. That was called Cole Realty Resources. It retails for $995 a year, which is not bad as it is, but some companies, I believe Coldwell Banker has it for free. They include it with their agents. I know we offer it at like 20 bucks a month. It's, there's different companies that have different features with it, but regardless, the database is fantastic. Um, so that's one way. That's the CSV that I was mentioning there. Okay. Uh, where am I hearing? Okay. The next item is the Facebook pixel. 
if you have a website, don't care what website it is, it's compatible with a Facebook pixel. A Facebook pixel is a small snippet of code, of HTML code that you place onto the back end of your website. Nobody sees it, but if you remember, when you go to Amazon and you're searching for a sweater, all of a sudden you're on Facebook and there's ads popping up for sweaters. That is because of a cookie or a digital pixel. When you visit a website, they're attaching something to your coattail and following you around. That's what a Facebook pixel does for you. Any browser, any consumer that goes to your website, any visitor on your website, it attaches and follows them, captures their IP address. So you can use the information gathered from your pixel, simply check it off that I wanna use my pixel because it's already pre-installed. And you can advertise directly to people who have visited your website before. Fantastic. The last one is engagement. Advertising to people who have either responded to an event, commented on a posting, replied to a posting, liked a posting, anyone that's engaged with your business, you can advertise directly to them. So as you can see, custom audiences gives you a lot of flexibility to hit people who you re realistically believe already want to do business with you. It's a pretty unique one. Going to the right, special audiences. This is primarily more on Instagram than on Facebook. On Instagram, you have followers. When you have followers, they all have their different uh, specifications. For example, let's say Keith, Kathy, and Karen. I'm only picking on you because you're the first three names on my screen. Let's say the three of you are all my followers. And Keith, you follow hashtag real estate, hashtag Pompano Beach. Kathy follows million dollar listing and Weston and Karen follows Florida Realtor, Coral Springs, and Homes for Sale, for example. It's compiling all of that information together and saying what is common among all of you, the real estate keywords. So it's allowing me to advertise to other users that I'm not currently connected with who have same interests. So that is the purpose of having those good quality organic followers. It allows you to find more people like them. Okay, that's an example. Any questions about audiences before I jump onto the next? We're almost to the end, guys. Thank you for your patience. Guess what? We're at the end. If you have any questions, you ever want to reach out, pick my brain, show me what you're doing. Um, I'm happy to do that. I'm going to open it up right now to questions. If you'd like to ask a question, feel free to unmute yourself and I would be more than happy, more than happy to answer that question for you. But thank you for your patience. Thanks for attending. And I wanna see you guys getting out there and being active. Let's get social together.